We have a lot of test frameworks in the market, such as Selenium WebDriver, Cypress, Playwright, WebDriver.io, and so on. One of my favorites is Test Cafe, and today I want to explain you how you can construct a kind of a framework, a small framework, and we're gonna review how you can install Test Cafe, how you can start working with Test Cafe step by step, how to implement the page object model, how to use the new feature base URL, how you can construct a configuration file, how to debug your test, how to create screenshots, how to use the concurrency functionality that they have, how to run your scripts using headless mode, emulate mobile devices, and at the end, so I want you to stay until the end because you're gonna see also that now Test Cafe has an API testing feature that is going to help you with well, sending requests to an API. I also want to tell you that uh, the examples that we're gonna re reproduce here are just to understand how to use Test Cafe. If you're gonna handle, for example, a login password, you need to, um, well, look for a workaround because it is not safe to expose the password uh, as, as simple as just sending the data. You need to encrypt it or hide from the execution recordings, right? So I just want to say that it is just for demonstration purposes, right? So let's go ahead and continue. Thank you very much, you guys, to stay and watch this video. Let's just start reviewing the, the Test Cafe landing page to see what they have to offer to us, all right? So as you can see here, uh, they are telling us that uh, it is an end-to-end -end testing simplified framework with, that doesn't require web drivers, okay? Uh, there, there is no manual timeouts needed. It is going to have an automatic uh, waiting system. Uh, also, we can use cross-browser testing uh, out of the box with the simple commands, all right? And here we have some reasons of why people love Test Cafe. The first one is that it is pretty easy to set up. In one minute, you're gonna have it totally running, all right? Also, it is telling us that it has a clean code feature because uh, it is going to freeze uh, you from, or Test Cafe freeze you from to need to insert manual timeouts and use uh, cumbersome boilerplate, boilerplate expressions. You'll spend less time tracking down annoying issues and more time doing what matters most. I agree. Um, free and open source, all right? So it means that it is available for free and distributed under the MIT license, all right? And we are committed to our open source community and are, are actively extending Test Cafe capabilities. That is great. And as you can see here, uh, we, we, here we have a comparison between the Test Cafe script, which is pretty clear and understandable. And then we have here, um, well, a Selenium JavaScript a script with a all the steps and, and the things that we have to do, all right? So with this set, I think that we can start. Uh, also, let me show you this feature because Test Cafe, well, works in almost every browser that matters. And, and we can use it on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, uh, Edge, Internet Explorer. I, this is Edge, right? Let me see the icon. Yeah, it is Edge, Internet Explorer, uh, Opera. And here we have like, a couple of providers like browser stack and i'm not sure if this is lambda or uh, yeah i'm not sure this provider over here right deploy without fear uh, it is ci cd re uh, ready it this cafe integrates with all popular ci cd solutions that is great we have concurrent test runs we're gonna take a look of that in a few seconds and if if something goes wrong use the built-in debug mode to to ping uh, point the source of your frustration. We're gonna see how to how we can debug the code, all right? They also offer um, a Test Cafe Studio IDE, which is a record and play uh, software that they sell. It is really very interesting one, and if you're interested, just come here and check the prices and what the, the product has to offer. I think that I have done a review of this pro uh, product at, in the past, so if you wanna check for Young Media, Test Cafe Studio, you're gonna see an, a kind of an introduction there, right? So let's start installing Test Cafe uh, in our computer, all right? Let's go ahead and do it. First uh, requirement here in our computer is to install Node.js, all right? You have to come here to nodejs.org and you have to download the version for your operating system. It depends if it is on Windows or Mac OS or Linux, right? So in my case, uh, if if I had to download it, I'll, I'll, I'll download the LTS version, which is the, the stable one for the moment that I'm recording the video. Of course, this version is gonna be 
um, a different one at the moment that you are downloading the, the, the node. It is totally okay. Just download the LTS version, right? Now, that, as soon as you have done that, um, you have to open the Visual Studio code, you have to reference a folder, and then you can access the terminal, all right? How you can access the terminal? Pretty simple. You have to come here, uh, click on uh, these uh, items at the bottom of, of the ID, right? And Or the text editor. And here you can access the terminal. I recommend you to use um, the command prompt for this uh, exercise just to make sure that everything is going to work fine, okay? So you can check that a uh, node is installed correctly and the node package manager as well using npm uh, dash version if I am not wrong. And it is going to return the version that I have right now installed in my computer, okay? Once that I have done this, the first thing that I have to do is install or create a package.json file using the command npm init, okay? And then it is going to request you for a package name. I'm going to leave it as it is. A version as well, if you want to specify one, a description, an entry point, a test command, git repository, keywords, author, license. And if everything is okay, you can just click on enter and it is going to be automatically generated for you, okay? Why is this important? Because we need to install Test Cafe and this uh, package.json is going to be the file where you're gonna save the dependencies, okay? So the first thing that I have to do is run a command that I have over here. Let me copy it for you, which is npmi save dev test cafe, okay? This is gonna save the test cafe dependency in our project. And if I run this, you're gonna see that in the package.json, we're gonna have a new dependency a, over here in the package, the JSON file. Let me just wait for a few seconds until it is, it is done. And you're gonna see that it is gonna work perfectly fine. Also, you're gonna see that in my root directory, we're gonna have a node modules folder displayed, okay? So this is the changes that I'm expecting to have as soon as this process ends, all right? So let's just wait for a few seconds. And I also want to tell you that I recommend you to install globally test cafe with this other command. I'll be opening another um, command prompt here, all right? And you can run the npm install dash g test cafe, all right? Just to have it installed globally in your computer, it is a, a thing that I recommend you as well. Okay, I want to start um, installing or well creating my first uh, test. Okay, how I can do it? Well, it is going to be pretty simple. I have to come here to new file, but I need to create a folder, right? This is going to be tests. In the tests folder, I need to create a new file, and the new file is going to be login.js. Um, File. And well, to start working with a uh, test cafe, we need to use the first thing, which is a fixture. All right, the fixture is uh, uh, is going to represent a group of tests or a, a kind of a test suite. So we can call the the fixture with the with a name. We can call this, for example, login suite. Okay, and then I want to um, use a command here, which is the page uh, command. Okay. And I'll be sending uh, the, the website that I'll be using for this video, which is going to be the SAS demo website, which is this one, right? There it is. Now we're specifying uh, that this particular suite is going to be running or is going to be trying to access the website SAUSDemo.com. That is great. Now that I have this information, I need to use uh, the test command here. And well, this is going to be... Uh, for declared uh, different tests in your suite, okay? The first parameter is gonna be the name. I want to call this valid login, right? And um, the second parameter here in the function, a async function, right? And as parameter, we're gonna be sending a T as parameter. Let me explain you what is this, right? And I'm gonna open the function here. And now we are accessing the T, which is the test controller um kind of command to access right the api commands that this cafe offered to us right um it exposes the test api methods so we can interact and and do the different actions and assertions that we need that's basically what is happening here and that's the meaning of the t all right so now that i have this i need to access the or use the await command right since we're using async await as 
as, as the way of handling asynchronous code here, all right? So we need to use the, this syntax, all right? So um, we're gonna be accessing the task controller again, right? And I just have to start doing actions and I have a lot of them. You can see them in the, in the Visual Studio code. We have expect, browser, click, close window, debug, delete co cookies, get cookies, offer, and so on, resize, window, scroll, scroll by, select text, and so on. We have a lot of methods. That's, that's why I was telling you that the test controller exposed the test cafe API to perform different actions, right? So in my case, I want to, well, create a login test script to make sure that uh, if I enter a username and a password here, I click on login. And if I enter the correct user name, standard user, and the correct password, a secret sauce, and if I click on the login, here I am going to have this titled products, all right? So let me explain you how we can achieve this. I need to find the element username here, inspecting the, the Chrome, uh, with the Chrome DevTools, the HTML. I have a video already inspecting and exploring how you can find elements in a lot of ways using Nextpad and CSS selectors. If you want to check it out, you just have to look for Young Media, CSS selectors or Young Media Xpad, okay? And here in the input, you can see that it has an ID, username, all right? So I'm going to copy the ID and I'll go back to the framework. And here I'll be using the command type text, okay? The first parameter is going to be username, but this is an ID, so I need to specify a, well, a, a numeric symbol at the beginning of the, of the text to find the selector or the element with the ID username, all right? Now that I have this, I need to, well, send what I want to type, right? In this particular case, if you remember, the value to access the login correctly is a standard user, right? So I'm gonna copy this, I'll be pasting that over here. And then I need to do the same stuff for the password, right? Do you agree? <laughs> All right. If you wanna support this channel, please, um, well, hit the like button and subscribe. As you can see, the password input has the ID password as well. So I have to use the numeric symbol at the beginning, then the ID name or the value. And then as a second parameter, I have to send the password that I need to access to access the, the login website, right? All right, now that I have this, I also need to perform a click, right, in this button. So let me check the ID for this button, which is login button. And I can do uh, that click, probably, sorry, that click. And as parameter, I just have to send the ID login button. There it is. It should work, but now I want to make sure that as soon as I enter correctly to the website over here, okay, and I enter the secret sauce, um, I'll try to get the products title here to make sure that it has the text displayed in the UI. So this is an span, as you can see here, it has the class title and the word product. So I want to use the, the class over here and I'll have to do the following stuff. In order to make an assertion, you need to follow the structure expect, but I don't need the semicolon here. I'm sorry, guys. Expect, and then inside, I can access an element using the selector um, constant that is required from the test cafe library, all right? So inside of my selector, I can look for the, um, well, the class title, right? You remember, this has the class title, all right? And I want to access what the selector or the element has inside, the value, the text. How I can do it? Using the command inner text. There it is. And then I can use the equal, right? Because this is the structure of an assertion. The expect is the actual value, which in this particular case is going to be what I'm getting from the UI, right? And then in the equal, I'll be sending what I am expecting, which is products. Right? You can see the products word over here. This is the, the thing that I'm expecting, the expected value. And I just want to make sure that this is equal to what I have from the uh, from the website, okay? And that's it. I think that I can run this particular test pretty easy using the command test cafe. I can specify the web browser that I want to use. In my case, I want to use Chrome. And then I have to specify where I have located the test, okay? So I'm gonna uh, close the the node modules here because it is making a lot of noise and well 
my test is inside of the tests folder, right? And I just have to access login.js. And you're gonna see that it is gonna start uh, a Chrome execution here. Let me see. It was open in my, on my other window. And you can see that it is gonna start, well, the, the sauce demo website, right? It's gonna start typing and making sure that the product style is displayed in the UI. It is waiting until everything is loaded and you can see that the suite is working correctly. What, how I can prove you that this is working and it is testing the title. If I change this to test, right? You're gonna notice that we're gonna have an assertion error and obviously the assertion or the test is working correctly or not, okay? Let me just bring back the, the browser here. Okay, there it is. You can see that now it is not going to look the product's title and we're gonna have an assertion error and uh, it is going to be displayed in the console log because the actual result, right? It was expecting products, but it, it found, no, it was expecting tests, but it was found products. So we have an issue, right? Of course, this is just on purpose to make sure that the assertion is working correctly. All right, guys, um, let's continue with the next part of the video, which is going to be, if I am not wrong about, um, how you can use a base URL. Let me show you that and, and you're gonna see that this is going to be amazing, okay? Okay, guys, let's imagine that you want to have a centralized URL for your test suite, all right? Why is this important? Because sometimes your tests may, might need to be redirected to another test environment, right? And let's imagine that you have a lot of test suites and you have to come manually and change every single one, right? So in this particular case, I want to explain you how you can use a relative URL uh, with Test Cafe. Let's go ahead and do it. I need to create in my source, in my root directory, a new file here uh, called that test cafe rc.js, all right? In this particular file, I'll need to have the following structure. And in my example here, I have added the base URL property here, right? That's what I added from, from the base documentation that I got from Test Cafe. And in this base URL, you can see that I am accessing the website that I need to test, which is saucedemo.com. But now um, I need to replace here something because since I have a base URL, I just have to access, right? The, the, the slash, the index, right? And I can replace the, the URL because I, have, I am defining this in the configuration file using a dot. Okay, that's it. If I run this again, you're gonna notice that it is gonna run the SOS demo website because it is getting the base URL configuration from the test cafe rc.js. Let me show you this. It is working fine. We're using a base URL or a relative configuration. Okay, let's continue with the next part of this and we're gonna create a second test here which is going to be invalid login. As you can see, it is the same as, as, the, as the one that I created before, but I'll be changing the correct username with a, with a wrong one, right? And it is the password with another one that is not correct. Pass, right? And it is gonna click on this, but now let me reproduce what we're doing here, text and as a wrong password, I'll click on login. But now we don't need to check the title, right? Because it is not going to be redirected and it makes no sense about this. So I need to, <coughs> I'm sorry, I need to check the this particular element over here to make sure that the error uh, class or the element with this particular data test attribute um, contains the text epic sad face username and password do not match any user in this service because we are not entering the correct data so in order to get this uh, um, this information I need to change the selector in the in the assertion right it is going to be let me see it is an h3 element right and this is the uh, values that I have to send to find it as a selector there it is. Let me show you that this is gonna work and I'm gonna copy this. I'll be pasting that uh, the, the selector that I created and it is finding the element over here. If you wanna see more about CS selectors, please go ahead and check your media CS selectors, CSS selectors in, in the YouTube search bar and you're gonna have more reference about this, okay? Um, that's it. Um, now that I have this, also I need to change the test products with the, with the, with the new 
epic sad face username and password do not match any user in this service, right? So I'm gonna run this test again, and now we should have two different tests. Do you agree with me? Yeah, I think so. Let me just bring the browser here because it was in the other window. And it is gonna start with the correct or the valid uh, login. You can see this in, in, as, well, in the bottom part of the browser as well. And both of them are working correctly, all right? However, let me show you something. Uh, be curious about this uh, behavior. You can see that in the first test and in the second one, we are repeating the same set of actions, right? Type text, click, type text and click. I want to use a pattern here, which is named page object model that I also get from the official documentation. And I want to explain you how you can convert uh, this piece of codes in page objects and how you can reuse a method. Let's go ahead and check how we can do it in the next part of this video, okay? Okay, guys, let me construct a page object and let me explain you how you can achieve that. I'm gonna create a folder here named page objects, okay? And in, inside of my page objects folder, I'll create a, a page object .js, which is going to be named login page.js, okay? Inside of this um, JS file, what I need to do is basically um, create a class with the same name as, as my file, which is login page, and it makes sense, right? We're gonna create a kind of a model of, of my login page to find all the selectors that I need, right? To um, click, for, uh, type information, and so on. So also we have a centralized object with all the selectors that we need. In case tomorrow, um, the the input element the the username input element selector changes we only have to come here to this particular object and change only selector only one selector in the model okay let me explain you this step by step so it is going to make sense at the end okay i'm going to create the class and at the end i'll be exporting this right using export default new login page so i can access this uh, when I import it in, in the other instance in the test, okay? Now that I have the class, I, I already have this uh, as an, as an export, I need to start constructing or declaring the constructor here, okay? The constructor is going to have uh, the different elements that I need in my website, okay? So for example, I'm gonna start with the username input, okay? And this element is going to have, or this, um, yeah, this element is going to be representing the selector, right? That I need to find the element username input. I'm going to come here. I'll be grabbing the ID username to find the element. Okay. And I'll be just sending this as a parameter. All right. There it is. I need to do the same for the next, um, for the, for the other elements. This password input is going to be equal to selector. And well, I need to look for the CSF selector that I created, which is password here, all right? There it is. And I need also another one for this, that um, login button, which is going to be equal to selector, right? The selector um, login button. There it is. Um, once that I have declared all the elements that I need, uh, what I need to do is basically come here and create a function because I want to create a function that is going to be something like login, right? Or yeah, login. It sounds good. And it is going to be receiving a couple of parameters. It is going to receive a username and a password, all right? And inside of this, I need to uh, do some actions. I'll be doing the same stuff that I'll, I'm doing here. Let me explain you that, okay? Gonna copy this and I'll be pasting it, that over here. And now instead of sending the hard coded selectors here, I just need to reference them using the this expression here. Okay. That is great. Beautiful. And now instead of sending the hard coded uh, values that I want to type, I can use the username parameter, right? and also the password that is going to be received when I instance the object or yeah, you're gonna see this in a few seconds. There it is. Now it is totally fine. I, I just need to import the, the page object, the login page and use the login button 
and it is going to be doing this uh, section of the code. Let me explain you this. Let's go ahead and do it. I'll replace all right, this piece of the code with a page object element, right? With the page object method, okay? <coughs> I'm sorry, I I'm a bit sick. Um, there it is. Um, I'll, I'll be only um, declaring the assertion at the end. I'll be doing the same with the embodied login. Of course, that you can also map the other selectors as a page part or as a page object if it requires another one, all right? But it is just a, a demo for you, okay? So once that I have done this, I just want to um, call the, the thing that I need, right? Let me show you this. Using the import a command here, and I'll be importing the login page, all right? And it is gonna be from, and I just have to specify where is my page object instance, okay? So I just have to look for page objects, login page, and there it is. Now I have access, for example, to the login page and I can access the login method. If we see the description, it is uh, expecting a new username and a password, right? So I can come here and send what I need. That's why I didn't want to send. Let me grab again the, the correct username, standard user, and then the password. Correct, which is secret sauce, right? And I want to do the same stuff for the another scenario, which is invalid login. If you remember, we entered before the test username and the test password, which is not registered in the service. So if I run this again, you're gonna see that it is gonna work perfectly fine, but now we are reusing a page object um, method, right? And the selectors that we have are only in a single page object right so in case we need to change the username um, instance it is going to we only have to change one part of, of the of the test here we have an issue let me see what is happening let me import the t the test controller from test cafe just to make sure that it is not a problem right let me see now it makes sense let me see if it works or not okay it was the issue Basically, I wasn't, I wasn't importing the test controller, and it was no, well, automatically it was not capable to understand what what was that uh, what, this particular T. Okay, guys, if you want to debug your test, let's imagine that you want to um, use a breakpoint uh, when when you type the username of your uh, in the login page, right? So I have to only use the command debug. And if I run this again, you're gonna see that the execution is gonna stop and you can go with step by step and checking what is happening, okay? Let me show you this. It's gonna start the, the, insta the instance, it's gonna work perfectly fine, but it is gonna stop. And here you can see that I can resume the execution or I can go step by step checking what is happening and trying to uh, find the, the, the error that we have over here, right? It is waiting and you can see that the next action is going to start the next test and you can go ahead and continue doing this or resuming and it is going to finish this correctly. So this is an approach that we can use to debug our test if we want to, right? That is great. Okay, guys, let's imagine that you want to take in a screenshot on a specific part of your test, all right? And let's imagine that you want to have a screenshot as soon as you click on the login button or maybe when, I don't know, I'm gonna well, delete the debug here because I don't need it. But um, for example, as soon as the logging method finishes, right? So I can do something like this. In my I await T, I can use the method the screenshot. Okay, take a screenshot, I'm sorry. And then I have to specify where I want to uh, get the screenshot that I need, okay? In this case, it's gonna be in the screenshots folder, okay? That's it. If I run this again, you're going to notice that it is going to take in a screenshot as soon as the invalid login uh, action happens. All right. Let me show you this. It is, it is working in another tab. I'm sorry. Right. It is, you won't notice that, to be honest, but there is going to be an, an, a snapshot or an, a screenshot. And you can see that it has a, created an, a screenshot folder. And here we have the, the screenshot that I, that I wanted. Right. Another thing that you can configure this in your framework is the concurrency. Okay. What is the concurrency? Basically, 
it enables to run multiple browser instances simultaneously. Let me show you this. I'm going to go to the testcafe rc.js, which is the configuration file of our project. And here I'll be, um, well, I'm commenting this line of code, which is concurrency. And I'll be uh, placing the number two here. You're going to see what is going to happen here. I'm going to run again my test script. Okay. And uh, let me, <coughs> I'm sorry, let me bring the windows over here. You're going to see that we are executing the tests at the same time. It is lovely. And it is going to uh, happen simultaneously in two browser instances, right? It is using the concurrency to, well, if, well, um, run our tests very fast, right? And using uh, or taking advantage of this beautiful feature that does cafe uh, tell us, right? So uh, yeah, that's basically the concurrency. You can use more browsers here if you have more tests. Also, you have to uh, measure the, the capacity of your uh, devices or your CI/CD environment, right? Okay, guys, let me explain you how you can run your tests uh, using headless mode. You can use the headless mode here in Test Cafe using Chrome and Firefox. The headless browser don't display their GUI, making it possible to run them without a GPU, right? And uh, even then, you can still take screenshots and resize the browser window in headless mode. That is great. Let me show you the example. I'm gonna come here and I'll be sending uh, the same parameter, but I'll be changing Chrome uh, I'll be using uh, well this uh, syntax over here and I'll be sending the command headless okay you're gonna see that well you cannot see this but it is not opening a graphical user interface Chrome instance it is running in the background and well at the end we're gonna have the final results it is gonna take the screenshot but it was happening in the background I don't see anything in the execution time all right this is basically another thing that we have with Escafe, and um, you can see that it only works with Chrome and Firefox as per the official documentation at the moment that I'm recording the video. In a pretty similar way, we can emulate a device, and let me explain you how you can achieve it, okay? So let me just copy the command that I need over here, all right? And let me explain you the structure. Of course, as you can find more information about this in the official documentation, you can have the references in my GitHub repository over here at the at the bottom. You're gonna have all the references that you need. And for this particular piece of the video, mobile devices, cloud browsers, and emulation. Okay. So uh, in order to run this in an emulation device or an emulation mode, I just have to change the Chrome headless with this instruction here. Let me show you this. Chrome emulation device iPhone X, for example. All right. And you're going to see the, the, the execution right here. And you're going to see that it is going to have an emulation um, viewport. Okay. Let's see. Let me show you this. You can see that it is like emulating a, an iPhone X viewport, right? And that's basically what is happening here um, with the viewport example that I have for you. Okay, masters, let me give you an example of how you can send a request by API using um, Test Cafe. This is a new feature. I love it. And let's review how we can uh, approach uh, an API testing, for example, a pretty simple one, right? Um, I have the JSON placeholder here, right? Which is a, a public fake API for testing and prototyping. And as you can see here, I have an endpoint to get one particular to do, right? They are using fetching, for example, but I'll be using TaskCafe. If I run the script, it is going to return this information, the user ID, the title, the lectus out, out them, <laughs> and the completed property as full. So I want to check only the, the title. And when the response comes, I just want to make sure that it has a 200 OK status code. OK, so let's go ahead to the TaskCafe framework and I'll be creating uh, mm, a JS file, okay? And I don't want to uh, create the script from scratch because I know that this is a very long video and I don't want to, uh, well, take you more time than, than, the, than the one that I have, <laughs> that I take before, right? So, um, there it is, <coughs> I'm sorry. All right, uh, as you can see here, what I'm doing is a basic fixture. It is gonna have the name request 
and the test is gonna be get request, okay? You can see that I'll sending, um, I am declaring a constant here named results. I can perfectly name this response as well. And I'll be using the command await t that request, and I'm sending in the in a, an object notation all the things that I need. In this particular case, I only need the URL or the endpoint to do one, and the method get because I know that this is a get method, right? And as you can see, it's going to return the, the the results, and I can access the body to make sure that the title is the lectus autem as I declare here in the over here in the in the response. We can see this. This is the expected result. And also I want to make sure that the status is 200, 200, because it was for testing and making sure that my script works, okay? And if I run this, you're gonna see that it is gonna work. But now instead of it, well, running our login JS, I need to run the API JS, okay? You're gonna see that this is gonna work. Well, it is open in the browser. It is not going to require the browser itself. It is gonna just send the request in the background. It is not working. Why? Let me see. Tests API.js. Oh, I created the, the 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 API test on your pages. I'm sorry, guys. There it is. I'm gonna run it again. There it is. And you can see that the get request test, which is this one over here, is passing and it has the title, the lectus out out them and the status 200 okay. How I know that this is correct, because if I check with the console log and the results or, or the response, you're gonna see that, um, you're gonna see the response in the console log. Let me show you this. Let me just give, let's give this cafe a few seconds to, to send the request. And you can see the response here. You can see the body, the lectus out out them, the completed post property, and inside of here, you can see the status. I'm just making assertions to make sure that the information that it is retrieving is the correct one or not, right? So guys, I really appreciate your time, guys. I, I think that it, this was a very long video. Um, and I hope that you enjoy this. This was an introduction about Test Cafe, what is new, and, and I hope that you enjoy it. Thank you very much, Masters. This was your media, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.